Hello, 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 and welcome to the YMPL Review Show. Once again, a spectacular weekend. But today we're going to look at the epic under-15s North fixtures. We're going to get Grangetown or Tameside, under-13s North. Are they going to, who's going to be the top four? We've got the ups and downs of the coming fixtures. And also, after Watson Park won their under-12s Netball Cup, what does that mean in the YMPL Grand Finals? And we've got a special guest, Naomi Green, who was inspired by our shootout challenge to be a shooter. Now, that's yeah. a wonderful story, isn't it, Rich? Yeah, we, yeah we, we've got Naomi coming in. Um, she got the MVP of the um, Under-12s Netball Cup National Finals. And her mum reminded me that um, the journey she took to, to become a shooter um, come within the lockdown shooting challenge we did all those years ago. Oh, um, and I, 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 well, I've spoken, I, I said this, I think this last week, but the amount of people I speak to and they come up to me and they, they never say, oh, that league game or that competition you did, it's always, wow, that shooting challenge was amazing. In <laughs> no, no, no investment needed. Just sit in your houses, get a netball post <laughs> and live stream from your garden. Well, yeah, I, I tell you what was the funniest thing about all that as well is the parents helping out and you could see them getting all the the look from the from the girls if they didn't give that ball back. Yeah. Quickly. And they actually had the parents. I, I, I think it brought the family together as well. It was such a, a great time. <laughs> it, was, time. It, was, it, it was. It was it was incredible, to be fair. I, 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 um, and it, yeah, it'd be nice to it, it, it's a good story and it's a really nice story to listen to. So when. Once we do our recap of Saturday and look forward to this week, we will, um, yeah, we will uh, have a chat with her and and then just get her her kind of feedback about where it all started and what she's been doing because um, she she was incredible on Saturday and scored one of the best goals I've ever seen in 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 one of our national tournaments as well. So we've got that to show everyone. But um, before we do that, we're going to recap on the under-13s Northern Conference. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the table, Martin, but we've got two really two really key games in this table. I'm just having a look. I think. We've got two really key games at the back end of the season, and we'll, we'll talk about them. So, um, <laughs> um, March, God, sorry. March the 23rd, um, Chester versus Oldham, 16.46 to Oldham. Um, Northwich defies Manchester Wildcats, 22.30. We generally thought Northwich would have a very weak team because of a county tournament. That got cancelled because of weather. Um, and um, so it's good. It was really good because both teams and had a good, good chance of winning. But Manchester Wildcats got the win. It was relatively close all the way up to the fourth quarter. Uh, and but Manchester Wildcats got the win. Um, well, just did that little bit extra in the, in the last quarter to get the win. Then Chester played Berry, thirty three thirteen. Not a great season for Chester. Um, rock no. bottom. No, it wasn't. Was it? Hasn't. Nah, been. Rock, yeah, it's it's been a. It's not been good. Um, so yeah, bottom of the table, zero points. Um, they're going to have to requalify if they want to um, come back in the league next season. So um, hopefully they have the appetite to do it. We'll see. Um, Oldham, Northwich, the Fires, 43-20. Oldham, so that meant Oldham, eight wins out of eight. Put a little bit of pressure on Leeds Athletic to make sure they win their games in the afternoon. And then, and then we have this grand finale of this uh, title challenge at the back end of the season. I'm looking, um, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, <laughs> the table. <laughs> well, we've got three games, haven't we? We've got three big games coming up. Um, then Manchester Wildcats versus Ellesmere Port. Um, in the interview, I did say to the Manchester Wildcat girls, I wasn't particularly... I was a bit shocked at the level of competitiveness in that game. Um, they, I don't think they put Ellesmere Port under as much pressure as they should have done. It looked too easy for Ellesmere Port, and they won 39-16. Then uh, Berry Grangetown, what a game this was. So Grangetown come out the traps very, very quickly, got a good lead... They looked good for the win, I would say, all the way up till the second half of the third quarter. But then you, sport is such a weird thing. When the team starts to get confidence, it, it, it's, you can just see that like, you can actually see the picture changing in front of you. 
and Berry, they, they found a bit of confidence, that they found a bit of rhythm, and then they started to do things that they weren't, they hadn't been doing as um, that well throughout the game. And Grangetown then dropped into a into a, a, a kind of mode of um, just mistake, a lot more mistakes than they normally would, a lot more missed shots, a lot more misplaced pl- passes. So going into the back end of the of the game, it was neck and neck. Grangetown had the chance to go ahead um, with, I think, about just under a minute to go. They missed the opportunity. There was a ball played into the into the uh, midcourt player or, or the shooter. A bit of a rush pass. And then Berry had the initiative and went down the court and, and scored the goal. And then it was a Berry centre pass and then Berry scored again. And it was an incredible shot as well. I don't know if you remember it to finish the I game don't. off. I don't, re- don't remember it, no. Oh, it was an, an incredible shot. And if anyone's watching and thinking, why is he not put the highlights up? I'm... St- Misplaced the sheet, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I, I promise I'm going to try and find it and get him up and get him up tomorrow. So, yeah, there's some really cool shots in that. So I'm, I do hope I find it. Then Tameside played Chorley. Chorley were um, um, severely weakened. Uh, so um, 43-10 to Tameside. Leeds Athletic versus Ellesmere Port. I was hoping that Ellesmere Port would would give Leeds a better game. They did start relatively well, but just not enough consistency under the post, which meant Leeds um, ran up a, a, a kind of a comfortable lead. And even though kind of techni- technical wise at, at times, there was not much in the, in the game in terms of the, the ability levels of the players. It's just those fine margins make a big difference. And Leeds just didn't make as many mistakes and they were very ruthless when it comes to shooting. So that was probably the um, story of the game. Um, Grangetown Chorley like I said Chorley severely weakened so Grangetown ran up a big score 57-8 which could have been pivotal in their in their um, chances of getting in the top four because it could have come down to goal difference so uh, <coughs> that was good for them um, Leeds Athletic versus Tameside 31-18 but Tameside could have made a good account of himself but again it's just that ruthlessness um, especially in the shooting um, department, which is why teams like Leeds, Athletic and Oldham in particular this season have been so good because um, when they get in front of that post, they don't they don't miss that much. That's so, the key, isn't it? That is definitely the key. You can't be missing playing against these top teams. You know, Oldham, Leeds, amazing. You just see it constantly. Just the top, the top flights of every league, they hardly miss a shot. And when you see, no, people... yeah, again, that's that's the that's the big big key big difference because when you're playing football defensively, if you make a mistake, again, shooting for me in netball is like being a defender in football. You can do ninety nine, you can do ninety nine things right, but if you get that one wrong out of a hundred, you know you're the biggest failure on the planet. And it's the same in, in, in netball. You you can score, 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 score. You miss one, you miss one shot, and it costs you the game. Then you're the bad guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Football, yeah, yeah. you can miss, you can defend well, but if you make a little mistake and they score, it, all that great work you did really doesn't count for nothing. But I always remember thinking, these strikers, they get like they can miss about fifty shots, score one, and they're the hero. And I'm sitting back here getting absolutely pummeled. And uh, if I make one mistake, I'm the I'm the bad guy. So netball's the shooting. For, whereas defenders in netball, literally, if they just get one turnover every five or six plays, and that's that's just a, that's just a great thing. Mm. So there's there's not as much pressure on the defenders to cut the ball out as much as there is pressure on the shooter to score. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can understand that. But they, I would say there's more pressure on defenders, say in football, to make sure they're defending properly than there is for a striker to make sure he scores every shot he takes. Wow. There you go. Yeah, Anybody it's a role reversal. It's a role them? reversal. So what I'm trying to say is, shooters, you take Shoot. on a lot of pressure. You take on a lot of pressure. Um, if we look at if we look at the league table, we've got three big big games going into the final games of the final games of the yeah. season. So number one, Leeds Athletic versus Oldham. Yes. Um, 
what can we say? It's just a, a, a it's just a really good competitive game. Um, based on performance levels, I, like I said before, I I think Oldham are just coming is a bit. It was a bit like Leeds in our under 12s netball cup. It's like you kind of when you watch horse racing, you've got the horses that sit back a little bit. And they just wait in and they're waiting and they come through very slowly without anyone recognizing what they're doing. And at the and at the post is that they nip the, the one that's been in front the whole time at the yeah. post. Oh, where um, they, they come from? <laughs> yeah, but where they come from. So Odin, I'm not I'm not trying to say they've they've been going under the radar, but the they they you know, they've compared to Leeds' results, it it might suggest Leeds will, will win this game. But I think Oldham at the moment are just just revving up that engine at the right moment. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah. it's going to be a great game. Um, both teams have got quality throughout the court. So um, big, big game, championship game um, on the final day of the season between Oldham and Leeds Athletic. Berry are sorted. Doesn't matter what happens with Berry in the last day. They are third place, confirmed. Pick up their medals. Go home very happy. So Berry in third. Then the but second the Grange Town and Berry game though, wasn't it? There was so much passion in that. You yeah. Know, you see it. it was like they knew that whoever wins that goes through, you know what I mean, is in the grand yeah. final. So it was a great, great um uh fixture for that that you know, round four. It was actually yeah. like yeah. No, it's good. No, it's a, it's a brilliant game, really good game. And, and Grangetown, the, the, the amount of progress they've shown this season has been brilliant. So well done to the old coaches at Grangetown. Um, but, <laughs> Grangetown versus Tameside is, the, the, is, is our second big game. So we've yeah. got the, basically winner takes all, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is actually looking at it, Again, I haven't looked at the table, so I'm just looking at them and I'm going, yeah, that is literally. <laughs> it's like, did you. How did you work that one out, mate? Did you have a miss? A miss no, I don't, I don't, I don't, that, that was pure yeah. luck. That was pure luck. So, um, Rich, there you go. Because that that is a, a fantastic. You've got the title race, and yeah. you've also got the grand final last place. Yes, we've yeah, precisely. So we've got title, grand finals, um, fourth position, and then finally, <laughs> we have um Northwich and Chorley. Yeah, but right. mate. Again, oh, right. So I would no, say, no one, if, if you think about it, no one else can go down because Chorley, Inferno, and, and Northwich, um, if even a draw or a win, yeah, yeah, one yeah, of, yeah. good point. Ooh, so yeah, yeah. if Manchester Wildcats lose, it doesn't matter because if Chorley and one of the other one wins, it, it they they're still going to stay up. So there, it's it's they're saying like Manchester Wildcats, Ellesmere Port, Tameside, all. And Grangetown, if you want to throw them in, they're all confirmed as championship grand final entries. Um, we just got to sort out which one it is between Tameside and Grangetown. Um, but Northwich and Chorley are going to play to see who stays in the league, but also gets that last championship finals position. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so three huge games that, um, that will make that last day of the season Incredible because on the 13th, we have the under 12s in the morning and the under 13s in the afternoon. So you've got Riverton taking on um, um, Oldham in their championship decider. Then you've got these big free games. So you've got four really, really big games in the um, final day of the season. Oh, Oldham up there again. I'll, I'll just say that because somebody did mention last week that we don't mention enough about Oldham. But we do. We do talk about Oldham. We know that they're a formidable force. And especially, I did actually point out that the under 11s last week, I've done a special shout out to them on how well they've done. So, you know, in the under 12s league, under 11s, they qualified for championships. You know, it's like, well, you know, I mean, that's a, that's truly amazing, you know, at, at that age. So, Oldham again, we'll just specify that. <laughs> Is it, are they in all? All leagues. Trust me, if 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 people don't think we talk about Oldham enough, they need to go and watch the highlight reels because oh. Oldham get them. Oldham get the most highlights. So, uh, for, put, put questions. What don't worry about what comes out of people's mouths. Look at the action, the footage, and stuff that's being put out there. there you um, go. So, 
Yeah, so there you go. That, that we've we've got the the table is nearly decided. We've got a championship decider. We've got a fourth place decider, and we've got a relegation battle um, in the under 13s Northern Conference. So, um, Ooh, yeah, going to very going to be a very very competitive afternoon, Martin. In in that one. Oh, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments, people. <laughs> So, before we speak to Naomi, um, this I I, I I I can't believe it is as Easter's so early. This uh, is it? This year. Uh, you know what? I have no idea. I, it's this I weekend. <laughs> this 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 time of year, I know, Joe. Everything just comes to life. Obviously, Easter, and it's just like I have no when it, no idea. People go, "Oh, it's Easter next week." I go, "Is it? Oh, okay. That'll explain a few things." <laughs> well it's it, people said to me do you know it's easter i'm like oh no I, I thought easter was the first weekend of april um but we have an easter um easter league games in the under 15 youth network premier league northern conference fingers crossed um personnel wise um it's not affected too much because we've got some superb battles here mate so chester versus northwich sapphires will be our first game. Um, Chester still have a chance at winning the league, but they need to win these two games and um, continue to keep the pressure on Oaksway in terms of goal difference and points. Um, Wire versus Berry. So all the teams down to Macclesfield in eighth still have a chance of getting in the top four. So that game between Wire and Chester, so you've got fourth place Wire taking on eighth. So no, sorry. Yeah. No, what am I talking about? Yeah, so why are taking on Berry? Um, Berry still have an outside chance at getting into the top four. So a, a win, and it needs to be big for Berry because they're on minus twenty five, but at the same time, the fourth place team is on minus twelve. Yeah. So yep. it's not too much. Um, but then, if you look at Bramall, <laughs> they're on plus forty one. So yeah. if Bramall were to sneak in, now you're chasing Bramall's goal difference, which is not ideal. So Barry needs to win and need to win well. I think if Wire win, I believe um, they will confirm their, their top four um, position. Um, Grangetown versus Northwich Sapphires. So Grangetown still winless in, in this league. Um, Northwich Sapphires. We've got ninth versus tenth in, in, this, uh, in, 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 the, in the third game. Yep. Chester versus Berry. That's an interesting encounter, Martin. Um, <laughs> second place versus seventh place. Berry's team are packed, they're, they're packed full of talent. Um, they'd be desperate to win that game. So if they win the game against Wire, that'd be a huge game. Not only is it huge for Berry pushing towards the top four, Chester cannot afford to lose that game because chasing yeah. Oaks way for the title as well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be that's going to be one of the standout games of the day. So Chester versus Berry. Um, next up, Wire Bramall again. Another you got fourth versus fifth. <laughs> so uh, and Bramall need to win that game. They have to win that game. They got no choice. So that's going to be one <laughs> hell of a game as well, Martin. Yeah, I'm just looking. At, do you know what? That you're looking at that. And you're like, wow. I tell you what, the email I got to write is going to be a massive one because there's so many. Um, conundrums there for all these teams i mean you know fourth versus fifth you got from third all the way down to basically eighth they all need you know what i mean it's still yeah. wide open it, yeah it's, it is it is good um macclesfield versus grangetown so again macclesfield even though it looks like they're out of it in terms of top four qualification they, it, uh, they can win that game that's six points on the board yeah. um oaks way against ribble valley ribble valley tough game for ribble but um, I do like this Ribble Valley team, full of full of energy, full of competitive spirit. So it'd be interesting to see how they can potentially derail Oaks away from being. Don't forget, we've never had a team from the Northeast win one of our leagues before. So um, I'd, I'd be interested to see how the, how much they can push Oaks away and and, and um, put them under pressure. Um, Bramall versus Leeds Athletic. So Leeds Athletic still have an opportunity to get in the top four. If Bramall beat Wire, they'll be on eight points. And if Bramall beat Leeds, they're going to be in the driving seat, basically, Ooh, to um, yeah. get that top four position. But if Leeds win, and so just say Bramall beat Wire, Leeds right. beat 
Leeds beat Bramall, it's then like that check. means why do like ten moves in front? Go on. Yeah. <laughs> why are Bramall and Leeds would be on eight points? And it, if Berry win both their games, they'd be on eight points. That's what I think I was talking about last week. <laughs> When I said about the everyone's going to be on eight points, I think I was actually looking at this league. Um, yeah, so Bramble versus Leeds, another huge game. Then you've got Macclesfield, Ribble Valley. So if Ribble Valley come unstuck against Oaksway, that's going to become a must-win game. But if Macclesfield can get two wins there, Macclesfield could be on eight points. Exactly. So you can, you can potentially have Ribble, Wire. Then this is, this is actually mathematically possible. Ribble, Wire, Bramble, Leeds... Barry and Macclesfield all on eight points going the last game of the season. <laughs> along that, with along with Ribble and Wire. Oh. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the last game of the season will be the interesting one. <laughs> that would be quite something, wouldn't it? Oh, mate. You're, yeah, you'd have to have like an interactive scoreboard up. <laughs> that would be... Asking, Where are we? What do we need? How many goals do we need? What do we need? <laughs> That would be something if we can have every team from third place down to eighth place on eight points going the last game of the season, mine. That 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 would be it, wouldn't it? That, That'd be the that dream, would, wouldn't it? Oh, that would. That honestly, that would blow my mind to see that. But oh god, every game. Well, we have a look at the last games of the season. We will pretend that's happened, and we have a look at the last games of the season. So, last game of the day, Leeds Athletic versus Oaksway. So. Again, entertainment value on Saturday is off off the scale. Yeah. Um, I'll be interested to see what type of team Leeds will be bringing. Um, if it's a if it's a team we know they can bring, then Oaksway are going to have to bring their A game because they're, they're 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 quite something the, these Leeds teams. But what a game that will be to finish off the day. Oaksway potentially it could mean the championship, depending on how Chester get on. Yeah, but I'm not being funny. If they lose any of their games. They've left themselves wide open again. Yep. Yeah, so, precisely. So, yeah, because uh, <laughs> uh, well, so who have they got? They got they've got, they got Rubble Valley. Rubble Valley's playing brilliantly. And also, what was the other one? Uh, Leeds Athletic. Leeds, yeah. I mean, well, look, we know Leeds. Leeds, you know, they're not showing their part and they should be playing a lot better. And this could like you're saying, if they bring the the A team, they, they bring it all and they've done their study and they they bring the, the you know what I mean they they get everything working again. Oaksway could be in right trouble. <laughs> oh well, yeah. There's there's no reason why the, 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 the Ribble Valley can't win. There's no reason why Leeds Athletic can't win. There's no reason why Oaksway can't win those games comfortably. Um, I think Oaksway will get at least one win out of those two games. Um, Chester are going to hopefully have their fingers crossed that Leeds will be bringing a quite a strong side. Um, and if they do get the win, then the last. Depending on goal difference anyway, it might not matter. If Chester win both their games and Oaksway win both their games, then goal difference-wise, you know, it still might mean whoever wins the last game of the season wins the title anyway. Yeah. If, um, if Oaksway loses one of their games, yeah, look at the goal difference. That's just phenomenal. There's yeah. like all points in this. And that could change if, if Oaksway lose. No, 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 100%. It's, uh, it's, it's quite... This this league, um, the, these round of fixtures are quite something this weekend. So, um, looking forward to it. But if, if we just can imagine the, ta- the, you know, the table works out the way we just said it. So, going into the last game of the season, Macclesfield have Northwich Sapphires. Right. Um, yeah. Wire will have Grangetown. So, Wire and Macclesfield will have teams who are currently both in the bottom two. Right, yeah. So, that would be a big, a big positive for them. Leeds Athletic would have Berry, Bramall would have Ribble, and Oaks would have Chester. <laughs> so that is that that is that would be an incredible end to the season if if those narratives were to play out. It may if again, yeah, like like saying if they were all on the eight points as well. <sighs> Again, goal difference is going to come down to it. And talking about the title, even if both the teams go through, and, and let's just say they kept the goal difference the same, you know, Chester would still have to win and win by five goals. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's that's phenomenal, mate. That 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 table there is phenomenal. I, I can't wait to update that on Sunday and um and see where we're at. I'm going into the last game of the season because um I don't mean I, you're going to be like on Saturday. We're going to be like. 
oh my god that result means <laughs> and they'll be like after every game we'll be like that result means this and that <laughs> yeah no precisely um we do, we do do that people by the way we do sit there and then we we're like go over to each other and go wow what a game that is like that that's now changed the whole entire table and i have parents come up and ask me and i'm like well you know this has happened that's happened which means you know you need to win this game and if you don't win this game you're in trouble but if you do win it you need to win it by this amount of points and you'll go above it and they go Ooh. well if you if you look at it realistically like rip um what would i say I, you know, um, if you look at reason ripple valley and wire no i would say no i'd say macclesfield and wire no, no, I'd say why in particular, if they were to lose two games, I still they still shouldn't be disheartened because their last game is a very winnable game for them. Yeah. Um so I'm not putting that brain down at all, but no, again. But yeah, we're just again, we're just working off the table. The table is telling us what is what form teams are in. So we're just going off what the table says. So yeah, it will be um very interesting into the to the season, depending on what happens this 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 Saturday. So I'm um, looking forward to it. Um, I'm I'm going to promise something. Every MVP, I'm going to get I'm going to get a, a little Easter egg because it's Easter. Oh, a little like there's in Tesco. They got the little mini ones, like one one pound twenty for a little one that big. So um, I will um every MVP this um, Saturday. You're going to get a little Easter egg. Right, I'll get Jack to vote me MVP as well. Oh, no, <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's what we're doing. So don't. So I know now the players. Like, they they can't wait. They're going to have sleepless nights now with, with that offer, aren't they, mine? Mate, definitely. That I tell you what, they're loving that. They're loving the MVP. Let's know in the comments, people, what you think about the MVP. I think yeah, you, it, it, it's a it's a great award to be given because the umpires get to decide, don't they? You don't get to decide. They they decide and. Yeah, the big shouts come up and big claps and everything. I think, yeah, that's cool. And, they, and yeah, well, it. next season we're going to do a wristband. Um, for every time you get an MVP, you're going to get a wristband. Depending on how many you get, you upgrade the colours. Right. And what benefit so you, is it with the wristbands? Because what you do is you 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 try harder because getting the gold or platinum colour wristband identifies that you've had it a certain amount of times. Oh. So a bit like a bit a bit like the NFL ring. Like I, I've, I'm an NFL um, Super Bowl winner, and you get the ring. Right. Um, this okay. is going to be. I've got the gold wristband because I've got the MVP six times or whatever. Do you know, what I mean? the wristband people, <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to sell it on eBay for like ten grand. <laughs> okay, then Richard wakes up and has his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, this Saturday, looking forward to it. Should be a highly competitive game. Hopefully, Easter hasn't knocked out too many players and we get the, comp the competitive environment um, we desire. So, um, as ever, make sure you come and support. If you can't come and watch, make sure you watch online and support the players and the clubs on their mission to be ENG champions. Um, Martin, is our special guest in the room at all? She has arrived just this Brilliant. second, like perfect timing. Shall I bring her in? Yep, she, she, I think she's driving in her car. She's driving in her car. Yep, oh, she's Naomi, got a car. Are you driving? Yeah, how old yep. are you? I'm 12. <laughs> and you're driving now, you've just no, you yourself. Now, no, the police will arrest you. <laughs> my mum's driving, we've just come back from oh. training. Silly of me. Sorry, I didn't think about that. Sorry. So put it, put it this way, Martin. When you get when you get a competition, when you are named the MVP of the competition, you get given cars now, mate. Oh, mate. There you go. That's what it is. <laughs> so Naomi, I, I, Naomi, I wish, I wish. <laughs> I've got you in, Naomi, because um, after you 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 performed superbly, you got Leeds Athletic to their highest ever position in one of our netball cup competitions. Um, you runners up. No, no, sorry. The under 11s were runners up, but at an under 12s level, you got them to their highest um, position so far. Runners up a, after a, only a one point loss to Watson. Um, you were on fire all day in terms of your shooting. You scored one of the greatest shot, um, greatest goals I've ever seen at a national finals. And um, your mum come up to us at the end and um, said, oh, you, you know where this all started. And I, and I was, and again, with my kind of 
Alzheimer's brain. Um, I turned around and said, no. And she said, uh, she was inspired to shoot because of our, our shooting challenge back, back in lockdown. So, yeah. and then when, and when your mum started talking to us about, well, talking to me about it, it all come flooding back. I start when, when she started talking about Grangetown and how you were a defender, um, it all come flooding back. And I thought the story is quite a cool story. So give us your side of how it all started and what inspired you to be a shooter. Well, what happened is that I joined Grangetown at a young age and they started me off as a defender and just said, whack the ball and do your best. And then yeah. during lockdown, I got asked, do you want to try and do a fun shooting competition just to see if you can get it? And I went, yeah, I'll give it a go because I had nothing else to do during lockdown. So I kept on practicing and the highest I got, I think, was eight. And yes. I was missing loads. And we had to keep them going into the neighbour's gardens to get the ball. And then... <laughs> When it came to the actual thing, we then realised that under pressure, after I'd seen everyone else get 20, I, under pressure, I did really well. I ended up beating my squad and getting 16. And then from there, I got into the All-Stars team. And when I came back to Grangetown, they put me in the shoot and I've just gone on from there and joined Leeds. Yeah, so let, for anyone watching, so what happened was during lockdown, um, my me and my daughter we started doing a shooting challenge in the garden and it got so competitive between me and my daughter that i thought wow this would be great to pull it out to the country so i spoke to martin and i said martin we need to basically um put, uh, put on the show let, 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 let's 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 take this shooting challenge across the country and let's film it so when naomi come into the shooting challenge i was looking for an all-star team to take on other netball clubs around the country. And we, we didn't get beat, did we, Naomi? No. We never got beat. And Naomi would, it's like every day, wasn't it? We would we would take on another club or something, wouldn't we? Yeah. And um, yeah, Naomi would, you'd score between 20 and 30 goals in, 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 our, in our shooting challenge. So once, yeah, so what you're saying is once you, after that kind of competition, um, number one, you kind of realise that you are better shooting under pressure. Yeah. And then Grangetown stuck you in as a shooter. So um, did you kind of, did you kind of then take, you know, all the, the consistency you had in our shooting challenge? Did you take that into in, into actual games with Grangetown then, or did you still yeah. did you still find you were struggling? Well, no, because over lockdown I was shooting every day. So then, taking that into training and match play at Grangetown, it just felt the same as in the garden. So it wasn't really that much of a difference. It was then just the tactical play of a goal shoot to learn, and like mentally how to deal with physical goal keep. Yeah. Well, if you, if you could take if you can take the pressure of a shooting challenge, you know, playing in that normal game is just is is nothing, is it, Naomi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, the netball cup national final so it, this journey you've been on so you was inspired to be a shooter because of the shooting challenge you've 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 played for grangetown but you moved did it did you move am i right in saying that yeah so so you've moved and you've moved nearer to yorkshire so you've you've you've, you've um started playing for leeds athletic um what else what who else uh, do, you, uh, do you go to elite netball academy uh yeah yeah so you, you're at the, going. so you're at elite and you've come into this national finals and did you enjoy it on um, on sunday yeah it was nice just to play netball and see all the teams and martin we've got a, a, a shot we're going to show everyone um this shot you scored um would would the umpire would would the umpire given a foul if you would have missed it or was it just generally um, you being just off balance and then thinking I've got to shoot this while falling to the floor nearly? Um, I landed really weirdly on my ankle and then I put my foot down and I couldn't then move it because it would then be footwork. So I just chucked it hoping they would either go in or someone would get the ball and it ended up going in somehow. And and what a time to score because that put Watson under a lot of pressure then because um 
yeah, the game was 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 then goal for goal all the way up to the end. So, Martin, if you could play this this amazing shot, so everyone at home can see how um, how amazing Naomi is. All right, I'm going to play it now. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> can I play it again? Yeah, go again. Is, is that right, Naomi? Yeah. <laughs> the crowd. I think the crowd liked that, didn't they, mine? I, I think they did. Yeah, there was a lot, a lot of cheering going on with that one. Um, you did it. You didn't win, Naomi. But um, do, do you feel progress is being made by your team? Yeah, definitely. D are you we, sorry? Go ahead. So our coach had told us at the start to believe in yourself and in the team and to trust each other. So it was like if you drove onto a ball to give it straight away and trust that they would get it, and to not hesitate and just to. They, they told us to back ourselves and just let everything and just play netball and do what we know. And are you aware currently your position in the league and Watson's position in the league means you're going to play them in our grand finals, in the quarterfinals? Did you know that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, why? Why did you go kind of glum there? Are you not excited to play Watson in the in the quarterfinals, Naomi? Well, I'm I'm really excited to play them and see what it's like. So, a 32 minute game. Will the outcome be different? Yeah, definitely. Because in a 10 minute game, you have to. It's like whoever wins is whoever makes the least mistakes. But then, in a proper full match. You, if you make a mistake, you have time to get it back, and to and also, see if yeah. you've lost the first quarter, you can reset your head and go again. And then coaches can make good tactical changes and stuff as well. Yeah. So, um, so it, you would be quite confident if if that well, it's very likely. No, it is. Yeah, it's very likely that that game's going to happen. Are you quite confident as a, as a as a player, and 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 are you quite confident that your team can can potentially? Get revenge on on May the um, 18th. Well, my team's awesome, but we already know that we can beat Woodson because we beat them in the groups. But then yeah. in the final, it was just that they were ready to fight, fight more than us. And it just ended up that in the final, they were the better team. But in the long game, we'll have stuff to practice on in training. And yeah. Hopefully it'll go our way. Well, it'd be an incredible game. Um, there was hardly nothing in that game. It was just it was goal for goal throughout the whole entire game. So um, no, it, it, there was trust me. There's not too much to work on your end. It's just a case of who who blinks first in 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 that in that game. So um, Naomi, it's been an absolute pleasure um, to think that we were doing these type of things four years ago, and um, we're back here, and you're a, a national champion. No, your national finals MVP is quite cool. So um, it's great yeah. to have you back. Um, and we look forward to seeing you not just for the grand finals, but for um, the final games of the season in on, on April the 13th. So um, well done. And um, enjoy, uh, enjoy um, your Easter holidays. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks, you too. Not Bye. a problem. See you soon. Bye. Wow, what a story. What a story. Uh, it's cool. And do you know what? She, <laughs> how, how good was she talking? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. But like, we, you, you could sit and chat with her all evening. Yeah. And that's why the shooting challenge was so cool. Because all of a sudden, girls had the opportunity as young as eight, well, seven, eight, nine, ten years old to basically get confidence doing kind of media work. Yeah. And you can see Naomi smashed out of the park. She, she, those skills she learned doing that shooting challenge, she's taken, she, she still kept them. Yeah, not nervous with us, all perfect. Just, you know what I mean? It's, it's phenomenal to give them that ability to deal with A, the press. And, yeah. and also the other point is being on camera, for instance, because, you know, 
players do say to me about they see all the cameras when they, you know, especially if they're new to the league, they see all these cameras when they come out. And it's a bit like, you know, what I mean, it's like there's one at either end, there's one in the middle, there's a camera that's that's following you out. It's it's a lot, but it means you know, what I mean, when they start to play, obviously Rose's style and all that lot, they're so used to it, it doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Who, who would you? So before we go, let's talk about what the under 12s netball cup cup meant as we move into the grand finals because last season the top three teams kingsley power um leeds athletic and yeah. Oldham, they were top three in the netball cup and they ended up being the same top three in the um what do you call it the um netball cup. In, the, in the in the grand finals the youth netball premier league grand finals so what do we? What has that told us? Netball Cup, like Watson, for me, I was I, I put him down as a top fourteen, but I generally thought it would probably be. I had a premonition it'd be Leeds, but in terms of um, the skill set, I thought Oldham would probably win it. Um, that didn't materialise. Oldham come third, Leeds come second, and Watson come first with Ellesmere Port coming fourth. But going into the grand finals, do you are you are you do you think that would be the case or do you think the 32 minute games will serve up a bit of a different outcome i'm just going to bring up the tables mate i think i think it's one of those things where you go right do you know what let's bring them up we'll see how strong they look because the under 12s you know i personally think sometimes the the well the netball cup is a, is a great little little taste of what's going on isn't it yeah um, hide that I've got to say as well, this under 12 age group in particular um, is a very special age group because we have never had such quality of teams in, in high abundance. Like that netball cup, yeah. someone rang me up and said, that has been the best one yet because teams as low as 13 from 14 were giving us good games. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you just have to look at 16, 15, 12 in the north and 11. And in the south, we've got 16, 14, 11, 10, 10, 9. I mean, we still don't know who's going to be in the grand finals. But would you say Watson are the favourites going into it because they won the Netball Cup one? I, <laughs> 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 it's one of those things if I say anything I'm going to be in trouble um, definitely Woodson Park I'll tell you what's interesting about Woodson Park is they're new to the league okay same as Rivington so we really don't know how well they'll handle the pressure of the grand because the grand finals it is a very pressured, pressured environment yeah that music's going all the people are there and you can see the nervousness. So the so if they can handle it, which, I mean, I'm not being funny. Woodson Park have proved that they can handle it. They won the netball cup. It, it's that thing of I would. Uh, do you know what? I would say yeah, but again, Oldham's up there, and Rivington. They're 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 the two from the north. I'd be more worried about. Okay, then let's, let's put this in. So if we look at the top four as it is now, yeah. so Oldham will play Turnford, Watson will play Leeds, Rivington will play Sutton Town, right. and Stars will play Ellesmere Port. Who, who wins those games? So let's start with Oldham, Turnford. Who's winning? Oldham. Okay, let Watson, Leeds, Athletic. Who's winning? Sorry, who? Watson, Leeds, Athletic. I would go Woodson. I really would. Um, uh, Rivington, Sutton, go Rivington, Sutton Town. Oh, that's... See, Sutton Town are on a bit of a downturn. Um, I'm going to go Rivington. Don't kill me, Haley, please. Oh, hold on. <laughs> this, is, this might get you murdered. Stars are Ellesmere Port. Oh, mate. <laughs> I'd have to... Whoa, I'd have to go with stars. 
And oh. I, I, I know Ellsmere Port are going to kill me. I know it. I know I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. They got their new kit. They are absolutely on a massive upturn. But where stars are, well, do you know what? There's not really much. Again, it, it's literally paper thin. That's that's all I'm saying. It's paper thin between them. All these teams who are playing against each other. So Martin's predicting an Oldham Stars semi final along with Watson and Rivington. There you go. There what, you what, go. What's your predictions then? Or yeah, well, <laughs> it, as it, as it stands, um, everybody in the comments, give us your predictions as well. Yeah, go on. Go on. I would say Oldham will, would beat Tamford. Um, Lee, I'm gonna go Leeds against Watson. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Um, Riven to uh, do you know what that's for me? That's the tough one because both teams can blow hot and cold, drast like dramatically. Um, Rivington Sutton Town. Uh, I'd I'd say Rivington, and then Stars Ellesmere Port. Yeah, go on. yeah. I gotta go with Stars, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we can't go to the north. <laughs> We're both dead men walking. <laughs> the Ellsworth Port coach isn't going to have us, mate. <laughs> um, do you know, the reason I say that is because Ellsworth Port, when I tell you, the most frustrating team ever, because every time they come to a Nationals, you never, ever, well, apart from probably one of their teams, you never see the best of them. They're, they're so frustrating. Like, regionals or league games, you... um. Oh, Tom's gone for Oldham, Leeds, Rivington, and Ellesmere. Oh, he's gone from all four North ones. He's yeah. flying. So, um, yeah, I um, I think Ellesmere Port just experience based on what I've seen at national tournaments. They uh, they they blow hot and cold way too much. So I think they've stars got that new kit, mate. They've got. But then, new but then I'm saying that Ellesmere Port, you know, they didn't do particularly that well in the group stages of the Netball Cup. Um, but they come flying back in the court in the, in the last 16. They beat Sutton Town. What an, another classic Sutton Town Ellesmere Port game. Um, then they went and beat um Rivington. That was hilarious, <laughs> it's like controversial. Um, <laughs> not controversial because of umpiring or anything. If Tom's watching, he's probably thinking, Oh, again, <laughs> um. Controversial, the fact that there was a bit of an argument over centre passes, but we did get the correct centre pass, um, and um, Ellesmere Port went on to win the game. So um, it was, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing them a little bit of a disservice, but I think, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I think Stars that game. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm just going to think, I think Stars, but yeah, those games are, I think are decided. So Stars Ellesmere Port. Um, in theory, it is kind of decided if you look at the fixtures at the back end of the season. So um, get get prepared, get ready. Watson leads Athletic. That I, 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 that's probably going to be the game. Ninety nine point nine nine percent sure that's going to be the game. Tom's wrote, I love all umpires. <laughs> so, well, next season, I've, so I've got the wristband idea. Um, so girls can chase different colours to kind of give off, to, but basically like show it. the world I like um, yeah. the prestige. But what I'm also going to do is get a little camera, which is going to, and I'm going to pick one coach per round where I'm going to put coach cam on. Oh. Then what I'm going to do is going to take the footage and then edit it and take out all the bad bits, obviously. And then just give people an insult on YouTube every week. You get to watch, I would say, five minutes of highlights from the coach of this club. Okay. So you get an insight into what the coaches go through in in youth sport, which I think would be quite cool. And it, again, it depended on what the coaches allow me to show. It, it could get quite funny. They'd probably get a trillion views, some of these coaches. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, it turned them into like like uh, little mini celebrities. Like, oh my god, you're like coach. <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> they're like sitting down in a, in a restaurant. Can I have your autograph? Can I have a picture? <laughs> like, well, they're, they're, if, if anyone's if anyone wants to see bru brutal coaching at its finest, go and watch um, Last Chance You on Netflix. Yeah, um, go and watch the first series. You wouldn't believe 
how these people speak to 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 um young athletes, but they get results. Yeah, they get they get results. Um, again, it's and and it works to a certain extent. It it, it all depends. It all depends on the on the um kind of um. I think if you're shouting and bawling just for the sake of it, then in the end your voice will just become a noise. Um, if there's like, for example, like we go back to Ellesmere Port, the encourage they're loud, they're loud, and no one can and and there's nothing wrong with loud, but it's constructive. Hmm. I believe it's a very constructive loud, and I, I feel it benefits the, the team. But then, then sometimes you just get loud, and it's just like you're just a noise now you know you've with with it's, it's had its effect and it's now it's, it's now disappeared so coach cam is coming next season coach cam different colored wristbands to um which show off how many mvps you've got um trips to dubai trips to new york that's for you <laughs> not them <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we've got the ideas are flowing already. They're they're flowing already um, in preparation for next season, April the first. I'm um, registered. Hopefully, if I can get, I need to get the marketing done, but probably within the next seven to ten days, um, registrations will be live for any new teams who want to join the league. If any teams who are already in the league are watching this, you do not have to do anything. If you're in the top eight, you don't have to tell me you're doing the league. You don't have, to, or you, if you don't want to do the league, obviously tell me. But <laughs> you're, you're, you've got a place. You've got a place. Don't worry about it. You're in. You're 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 confirmed for next season. If you're in the top eight, you're confirmed. Don't worry about it. Um, and if the bottom and the bottom two, they're they're more than welcome to re-register and go into a qualifying tournament. The qualifying. But the best way to get fast tracked into this I've had a few clubs email me over the weekend because of the success of the under 12s event oh can we can we join your league this that and the other and the answer is well yeah the information will be going out we're going to have a qualifying competition in September the 7th and 8th I think it yeah 7th and 8th but if you want to fast track your club into the the biggest the best the most exciting the most competitive league in the country, which has over 450 games live streamed per season, attend the under 11s, under 14s netball cup. Because then if you do well in that, I'm not going to do a qualifying tournament to see how good you are because you've proven how good you are. I'll just throw you straight into the league. Ooh, and, but at the same time, it will save you wasting your time. If you come to the under lemons netball cup and get, and get beat 25 nil every game, then at least then you don't have to waste your time in a qualifying tournament. That's true. That's a good point. So under lemons netball cup, under 14s netball cup, get involved, get signed up. If you do well, we fast track you into the league. No, no silly qualifying tournament. Can't say better than that, mate. Can you? There you go. Can't. That's it's actually quite hard. a great idea, isn't it, though? The Netball Cup, 10-minute games, boom. See how good you are. Yeah. And it's, and it's a great place to be at to see how good you are as a team. Without and it's that. great for them to see the environment they're going to be coming into. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, if you want to get involved, make sure you go online, get booked. Still got places left in the north. Still got places. We've got one place left in the south. We've got two places left in the east and one place left in the Midlands for the under 11s and the under 14s. We've got three places left in the north, one place left in the south. Um, the east is four and the Midlands is two. So okay. it's get, involved. Yeah. get involved, people. Um, if you saw what happened on Sunday, the excitement, the drama, the competitiveness. And if you didn't, it's available on fblstreamslive.com. You won't find that on a concrete court. You won't. Some, no way. No way. Somewhere in the southwest or or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. But do they know what you mean? If they don't know what you mean, go to fblstreamslive.com. You can actually watch them and how it all unfolded. 
during the day. There yes, hundred percent. If you if you want to rewatch the action from the and the twelves netball cup, go online, order, and um, you won't be disappointed. Great competition. So many overtimes. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Do you know what was funny? Right, I look over at Jack. He's obviously doing court B. <laughs> and I go, he had the stop. most, didn't he? Yeah, he just went, and I'm like, again. And he's like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> Martin, do you want to share what happened to you? Because I've been telling you for many years now, shield wall. Right. I'm going to tell you something about your shield wall. Right. <laughs> Would the shield wall have protected you? It didn't. The shield wall actually caused my my cut on my face, and I was—I didn't take a picture. Actually, I was all bloody. There wasn't was, a shield wall. There was. So what I had was up at the front. If you notice, I, I'd, I'd stacked my containers. Yeah. So yeah, but I didn't go over the table. It. I tell you what, it did. It hit the box. And then it bounced and hit me in the face <laughs> on the box. <laughs> How it missed your laptop, I do not know. No, no, that was the point. It was the, the laptop was protected, but it. Oh, used, okay. So because the lap. I mean, well, that's I mean, good then. It worked. I, I was going to say, at least I, you know, I mean, I can repair from a, you know, not a broken nose, but obviously because it hit my glasses, it cut into my my nose. The funniest <laughs> thing was right, the um, person doing the scores, she goes. She looks at me and she goes, you're bleeding. I go, and I must have touched the only spot that didn't have any blood, all right? So I've touched it and I've gone, yeah, yeah, what? Well, because we do have a little bit of a laugh, people, La laughing a joke, you know, when we're doing the scores. And, you know, I'm controlling um, the cameras and everything and the scores and the times and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then the umpires look at me and they went, you're bleeding. <laughs> and then, you know, like, I got my phone, I looked at it and I went, yeah, can somebody just give me a tissue? Can I still have to control this? I'm still following the game. <laughs> I thought you had a. I thought you might have had a ruck with one of the parents who wanted a refund or something. Mate, nobody gets. Nobody wants a refund from me, mate. My my, my system's perfect, mate. It's my perfect. <laughs> even, even though my third party supplier is annoying me at the moment, but um, yes, I, you know, we we soldier through. We we do what we can, and um, get the. I mean. How many did you say? 450 live streams, yeah? You yeah. tell me... 450 games, yeah. Yeah, 450 games, which is 450 live streams. You tell me a live streaming company does that amount. Doesn't exist. in Not in grassroots sport. It doesn't exist. It's it's phenomenal, the amount. And don't forget, we do other stuff as well. Banger racing, concerts, boxing. You know what I mean? So I do... Oh, I tried to talk this up the other day, actually. Because it's creating a, like a media profile, <laughs> it was like hundreds and hundreds. You're like, yeah, yeah. It's like, right, okay. I should have a big, massive building. <laughs> you know what I mean? With loads of fans going out. But it's like, yeah. it's phenomenal. <laughs> you know, when you say goes to you, like, ah, so like, yeah. But that's a lot. That's a lot of um, live streaming that goes on out of FPL and what you know what I do. I mean, there is people out there who let me know people in the comments as well. You know, when you watch it, do you think? We're like Sky, because some people, the way they, they write the questions, mate, <laughs> is like, we're Sky Sports. It's like... Uh... Yeah. No, well, it's a, a great service, and um, it's, it's just a great for everyone to be able to access the content, whether, they're, <laughs> whether they want to re-watch re it, or though they're at home and um, can't make the event. So it's, 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 it's cool. It's a really cool thing to have, especially for kids as young as 10, being able to watch their games back. And then parents and family members can watch them as well. So um thank you, Martin, once again yeah. for the review show. Um next week, um, we probably won't have no, we definitely won't have one next week because I'm I'm in I've got a load of workshops right. happening. Um, but the week after we'll have a review show because we'll be building up to the under tens nationals. Oh, the under tens nationals, that's gonna be something. So we're yeah. going to do a quiz. We're going to do a quiz um, like we did for the under 12s to give away some prizes. So be ready, under 10s players, in a couple of weeks. It's your time to shine. Get on. Get involved in the quiz and you can win some prizes. So, um, Martin, always a pleasure. See you Saturday. Enjoy your Easter break, mate. Yeah, you too, buddy. And everybody, don't forget your subscriber on all the major social media channels. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Catch you. Oh, if not in a couple of weeks' time, Catch you on Saturday. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay.